just thought I'd show you guys this in regards to optimizing my little sawmill here. Something I just decided to do today. I'm gonna saw out a bunch of two by fours and just one buys uh, for my father-in-law. He wants to build a bunch of shelves in his shop and he keeps going back and forth. He wants to do it cheap. My wife wants to do it fancy. Uh, and I shouldn't say fancy, but she just wants it done right. I don't blame her. My father-in-law is like, I'm gonna use this half rotted free two by six that I found over here. And so I told him, I said, okay, for, you know, for the best of both worlds here, how about you get quote unquote free lumber from me off the sawmill, but it'll be properly dimensioned and it's not gonna rot and fall apart in a year. I think that'll be the good middle ground. Anyway, I'm gonna start hitting it today on the sawmill until I get rained out. Supposed to have some storms coming at some point, but as long as I've got, as long as it's not actively raining or lightning around me, I'll take it. But I'm gonna start sawing two by fours and one by as fast as I can. And I'm just gonna throw them on the trailer. That was the whole point of the video, by the way. I backed the trailer in over here. Normally I would stack all the lumber up right here across the bunks and my scrap is over here. I made a video about that before. But since the lumber's all got to go on the trailer anyway to be hauled to his place, I'm just going to go ahead and as it saws it out clean, it's going right on the trailer. I'll bind it down, hook on, and take it over there. So it'll save me the effort of picking it up and loading it and stacking it and restacking it and all that. I'll just stack it right on the trailer and off she goes. So little things like this, little just little efficiency measures when you can do them can make a big difference. But let me get the mill fired up and warmed up and let's get busy. That was the first three logs. I did two little ones that came out to be single cans and then one that was slightly bigger that made for a double cant, um, which I'm referring to three and a half inch wide cant. So you know, nothing on here is big, but you get something. That little guy right here, I think he needs to be thrown straight to the burn pile. It's not even worth putting on the saw, but you get one two by four out of it. Uh, I guess my father-in-law put that one on because I wouldn't have. Anywho, uh, yeah once you get them all sawed out just toss them straight on the trailer that was the whole point point. and um that's actually a good integrity test because i had one or two break when they hit the trailer which is fine you know because that just shows me that hey there was a weak spot there if it can handle the abuse of getting thrown on the trailer and bouncing then it'll be just fine for shop shelves that's the way i see it you never know how strong a knot is or isn't really i would never trust one but i was going to say one thing i did on the salma here um see i've got this the speed scale, which I've showed you guys before, and that's nothing new, no top secret. But what, what the sawmill came with was this sort of quick scale, which now that I'm looking at it, I forgot that it had inch and a half increments, <laughs> so I'm an idiot. Um, but what I did was, uh, rather than try to, I kind of worked backwards is what I was getting at. Um, because if you have a scale, just like their standard ruler scale that doesn't have the blocks, you can actually account for kerf by sawing from the bottom up versus the top down. So I make up my cants and then I start at the bottom, set the blade on inch and a half and make a pass. Um, and of course, as you make a pass, the law, the, the board is going to fall what, you know, into what was the kerf. So then you can come up to three inch, come up to four and a half inch. Um, the problem with that is as you get up above these stops here, um, only your bottom board is touching the stops. So if you don't have your, your stoppers set up, the top of the cant wants to start to try to drag off to the left because the saw blade's just pulling it. Now, of course, more water with more lubrication and a sharper blade will make that not as bad, but it's just something to keep in mind. So as I made the third pass, the top of the cants started to slip on me and I had to actually walk along and crank the handle with one hand and uh, just kind of press against the top of the cants with my other hand. It, it's not, you don't have to hold it, hard, you know, really, it's not difficult to hold, but you do need to put a little backup on it. I've done before where I've been basically resawing with this and actually walk on the, the board as I'm pushing the saw, I jump up and walk on the cant just as a way to kind of keep it held down. So just some ideas there on how you can do it. But like I said, the, the whole point of today's video, what I was went to mention was just, you know, direct loading. I don't know what you would call that, but other than direct loading, um, but yeah, just an idea. I'm not quite set up for it right, and of course, you know, to, to be able to do this a lot, you would want, like, multiple trailers, um, 
you know, ultimately what I want to be able to do here is I want to start really cranking through a lot of this material and stockpiling lumber to build my next house with and just start making up big bundles of two by fours and two by sixes um, and stack them to the side. Now I can't make huge bundles because my tractor can't really lift them very much, but I can still make bundles and I can bundle them right here on the rails um, and then just strap them, you know, just go get some metal banding, strap them, set them over somewhere to air dry for, you know, a year or whatever um, so they can dry out real well so we can use them. That would be the plan, but who knows? I'll probably never get around to actually doing that. I'll probably hopefully end up building the house sooner than later. And when that time comes, maybe I'll be in a hurry to do it and I'll just go buy lumber because I don't feel like waiting for all this to dry. Ideas, ideas to share. Lots to do, bunk system's working good. But yeah, mostly I just wanted to brag about feeling smart that I was direct loading onto the trailer. Okay, that's all for now. Well, it's a mess. But it's shaping up all right. My whole point here, my whole goal, really, is like I mentioned, my father-in-law wanting to build these shelves. And uh, he doesn't really know what he wants or what he wants to do. And I'm trying to demonstrate to him that we have all the lumber we could ever want. So if he, if he messes something up or he changes his mind, I don't really care. I'm not saying the waste is good, but, I mean, this, this pile of logs is nothing. It's nothing. I mean, then there's that little bit over there, and then there's like a thousand times more than this right across the road. So I'm just tickled to get it sawed out into anything, <laughs> into anything that I can, and uh, you know, put it to use. So I just got it kind of stacked up here as best I could. At first, I was organizing it, and then I was just like, "Ah, what the heck? Not even gonna bother." Um, this one here. And this one here were some miscuts. They're close to an inch thick, maybe not quite. But if he decides he wants precision, which it's not gonna get with rough cut lumber, but if he decides he wants precision, we've got a planer that we put over there in his shop so he can plane them down to an inch if that's what he thinks he wants. But otherwise, they'll do fine for shop shelving. Um, yeah, I uh, actually, I'm, I'm happy I ran in the middle today. I wasn't sure what was gonna happen with the weather, but so far the rain has held off but I think my time is about run out. It kind of spits and then quits and spits and quits. And that's got a nice ring to it. But I gotta shut it down regardless now. I gotta go get some eggs and get some dinner cooked. So anyway, trying to manage the efficiency and optimize the little sawmill here. You wanna see the weather. Okay, turn around and look at the sky. Look, turn and look at the sky. You see the weather? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the weather.